BMX is a bicycle version of motocross. In order to succeed in this tough sport, the riders must possess razor-sharp reflexes, perfect technique and incredible strength. The races are short sprint races, lasting no more than 40 seconds. Split-second timing and nerves of steel are key. For once the gate drops, the riders are faced with a daunting array of jumps and rollers, which are attacked at a ferocious pace. It is a sport at its most pure, tough, fast and brutal, which has seen it go from underground to Olympic sensation. On Silent Revolution, we take a look at the athletes who take part in this spectacular sport. This week on Silent Revolution, we travel to Braintree in Essex to meet up with newly crowned world women's number one, Joey Goff, as we follow behind the scenes as she films a promotional video for the next British national event. Oh, it's massive. It's, you know, you, you can't ask. That's, that's the pinnacle of the whole year, really. You know, that's opened up so many more doors now that would never be open before. You know, but it just takes one person to do it. It didn't matter which rider it was, just one person to get the W plate and then basically you start getting a lot more companies listening to you and being aware of you and following you and you know the conversations for sponsorship next year just become a little bit more easier really. Oh yeah, she's like, like when I spoke to her, she's like, yeah I won the world. You know, she's like dead relaxed, like these other people in the UK that's won similar titles at the same weekend and they're still banging on about it and changed their Facebook name to whoever world champion and but Joey's just like, yeah whatever, you know, it was a good race. You know, and she is dead relaxed and you know she's quite good to work with and I think the thing with Joey is she has been through like the British cycling machine. You know, she was doing it for a job and it just it wasn't for her and she quit for two years or however long it was and decided to come back this year with us and I think, you know, good bike, good relaxed team, no pressure and she was just actually allowed to do what she wanted to do and have a bit more fun rather than having these strict regimes of bed at nine, up at seven, out the hotel at ten, you know, where everything you're chasing the clock with, a bit more relaxed and she's a bit more chilled out and thinks she got herself a bit better prepared for it really. Uh, we're doing a promo video for the next national um, because Joey rides here quite a lot. She's classed as a bit of a local girl and obviously she won the world champs at the weekend. And uh, we've basically done a video of the trip from Braintree train station through the town of Braintree and then out to the PMX National and then doing a race. So basically it will go like viral next week and then just help promote obviously the, the, the event and obviously us as well, which is kind of a twofold way of doing it. I'll video you coming down, cross over the road, come here, put your bike there, look at the post and then walk in. All right. Walk in, grab the monster. Where is it? Oh. There. Alright. Then grab the whisper and I'll be behind the counter a little bit and then. Are we gonna do the counter bit next? Yeah, let's just do it all in one go. So you can... is somebody gonna say that back to me when I hand over the music or what? Are you, you gonna... gonna play shot? Are you gonna play shot? Do you want me to do that? Yeah. What am I gonna say when you say to me? <laughs> what you am I saying? You are? Who do you think you are, Shane Reed? Visa? Who do you think you are? Can we, yeah. we can't do that. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Who do you think you are? Shane's all right. You ready? Right. 238, please. Visa? Who do you think you are? Shane Reed? <laughs> <laughs> um, my name's Joey Goff. Um, I started BMX when I was about three years old. My brother was having a go because his mates were into it and uh, I was just kind of on the sidelines because I still had stabilisers on and uh, I just really want to have a go. My dad says, well, you can't have a go until you get your stabilizers off, and they're pretty much off the next week, I think, <laughs> and that was where it started. I think I just always enjoyed it, really. I always enjoyed riding and racing, and, like, when I used to race when I was a kid, I'd always, like, ride loads in practice. It was just about having fun for me, and I don't know, just the more I went on, the more, because I, like, enjoyed riding, I got better at it, and just found myself sort of winning nationals and things, and I just never really wanted to stop, so I just, just kind of went with the flow, to be honest. Good job. Right, 
sprint down here with the fan, when you've gone the gates, when you're coming towards the fountain back in your side, yeah. yeah. At least get the fountain well, in there. Yeah, it's going to be the first time I've sprint since 2008. You're on BC, you know how to do it. <laughs> just remember. Just go round the map. Yeah, we've got to keep an eye out for the traffic one. So literally, just like, I'll be halfway down there on the right hand side. Just do a quick sprint. As soon as you get past me, stop. And then what we'll do is. There's a jump down here. Oh, it's not. You can't, a... you can't use a cotton. Of... You can, we used to. for a jump. Remember when you said this? Stuff coming out of it, and you hit it would be oh, good. Like beer, yeah. <laughs> details, 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 darling. Love it. We can link it with your sprinter down and um, past the shirt. Okay, put it a bit further in, and I'll wait for one of you. Do you want me to fill it up for you? Put a bit more in, yeah. I've always loved the jumping side of racing on the tracks and stuff, you know, I, as I said, I used to just ride for fun at the races and stuff and enjoy jumping anything I could, even if it was unnecessary for a race. And um, when I sort of discovered riding trails through some friends, I thought, oh, this is amazing, you know, you just, you get to spend more time in the air than on the ground, it was just great fun. Uh, got into that quite a bit. Um, it's, it's quite a fun scene doing that sort of thing. You just hang out with your friends and you build your own jumps and I just really enjoyed it. Um, without a doubt it's helped me um, on the racetrack. You have to learn to jump in a different way for, for riding trails. It's a lot slower. You have to sort of pull up in a different way, lean back, go higher, um, which you think might be irrelevant to racing on a track, but it just gives you that wide school base. And then once you get on a track, you kind of know how to adapt to anything. Well. Now that I'm just racing as an amateur, you know, I have a full-time job, so I'm at work like nine to five every day. Um, I managed to sort out a Wednesday afternoon off, so I get to go to the track on a Wednesday afternoon. It's always what I'm enjoying, so I never do a specific training program or, you know, I do what I want really. And I do go to the gym, but, you know, it's not, I'm not that serious about it, so I'll go to the gym and if something else is on, then I'll go somewhere else. You know, if it's a sunny, sunny day in the summer, I'll probably just go down the track, to be honest, rather than go to the gym. I'll be going to I mean, I guess we could. We might get some of these ladies in. I guess we need to ask them if they mind, do we? I guess so. Yeah. Oh, I suppose I'll just ask them. Would you like? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that's actually quite nice. Those balls Sorry. They're going to be filming a promotional video and it will be going on to the internet. Yeah. Um, so, is everybody, is everybody all right about being in the film? Sit down, take your glove off. The lady will look at your hands and go, How much time have you got? <laughs> have you seen her hands? <laughs> and, then, and then just go, Oh, well, never mind. Okay. Don't yeah, worry about it. Then. No. Okay. Right. So literally, she just looks at your hands and thinks this is going to take a long time. Try to put my watch and get Yeah. Off yeah. Me. yeah. You go, Man. Okay. It's just to pretend you're like, 
It's going to hold you up, do you know what I mean? Because you need to get to the right. Oh, just say I've got a race to get to. Okay, we'll do it next time. I, I think I'm, I'm going to be silent by the snigger. Oh, yeah? Because so, I have the helmet in the shop. Yeah, we can't hear you anyway, it's unfair, I don't think. I just look at my watch and leave. You know what? I think if I actually had someone else, I'd pass out with these. Yeah, I've just like. Do you get used to this? How do you, you, how do you put up this smell? Yeah, it's fine. Why we're all happy? I found a limo, so I've got to hire it for 10 minutes. What's happening at the minute is I, our lovely person from Braintree is trying to talk the limo driver into letting us borrow it for a few minutes. There you go. And it looks like she's pulled it off. I don't know, it just seemed to have the knack. It just, I think people like a bit of fun, don't they? And uh, they can see how motivated and passionate we are about the whole thing, and I think they just like getting involved. But uh, I have to say that we very rarely get a no. The driver's mirror, because so it's blackened, so you can't see him in there. I just think, oh, I'll get in. So if you ride up past me, Yeah, come on, right. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, good, good luck. <laughs> when, when the Olympics first sort of came about with BMX, um, there was a couple of years where I spent on the national team, had the chance to do that, um, which was a great opportunity. I'm really glad I did it. Um, I kind of took it as far as I felt I could take it. Um, I made like top 16 in the world in elite. Um, but then after, after that, um, there wasn't a spot open at the Olympics for me because you only get kind of one spot for each country. And I just kind of had enough of it by then, you know. I've always done BMX. I say I'm glad I did it in that way, but I've always done BMX for fun. And when you do it as your job, you've kind of taken away that aspect of it. And you, you, you choose to do that. If you, you know, I chose to do it and I enjoyed my time and I focused on it. But once I was done, I was like, I want, I want BMX to be what it was to me before again. And I took some time away completely from the racing because I just, I just wanted to get out of that for a while. And that's when I spent a lot of time at the dirt jumps. Well, I wasn't, I wasn't sure, you know, if I wanted to get back into racing. I'd had a, a, about three years out, as I say, I just want to chill out down the trails and have fun with my friends. And I thought that's, I didn't think I'd race again, to be honest. And um, I started to get a little bit of an itch after a few years and thought, I'd just do a race for fun. And I, you get back and then you realise, you sort of remember that there's nothing quite like getting the, the nerves of sort of getting into a race and that's, that produces the adrenaline that then at the end gives you that buzz, which nothing else really does. You only get that from competing. I get, I get a buzz from jumping big jumps and stuff, but racing is kind of a different buzz. And what, yeah, you've got to compete to get that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, once I got back into the racing um, for this year, it was 
partly the, the World Championships in Birmingham this year that we, I kind of thought, well, you know, I would quite like to be a part of that. It doesn't come to England very often, and that's almost what got me back into it. Um, so I went there just with the intention of just enjoying it, really, enjoying the atmosphere. It's a, it's a great thing to go to. All the, the whole country of riders come together, you know, it's like a big community, and it's great to be a part of it. Um, felt pretty good on the track, and and it got to Friday race day and I actually felt quite ill. I was full of cold and stuff, so I didn't really know how it was going to go. I just took it as it came and as the day went on it just kind of got better and better. As I went up for the quarter final and the semi final, I just sort of went out there of, well I want to get through to the next round. So I got through to the semi, felt a bit more confident, picked the inside gate which was obviously a sign of confidence, won it again and then when I went up to the final I kind of thought I'm in, the, I'm in the final now and I had to sort of felt like I needed to make a decision out of what I wanted out of it and I've, I've never won anything international before at all and as I was going out there I thought well I, I could win it but could win it isn't going to win you it so I decided there and then that I wanted to win it and I was going out there with the goal of winning from that point really I was just feeling just don't mess up <laughs> I was just you know how close how close I was and Anything can happen in BMX, and you've still got those jumps to get down the last straight. And I was just thinking, just just focus, just just get it right, and get across that line, because I think I've lost things before. You know, it happens to everybody. And I just thought, just don't throw this away. As across the line, I felt quite a sigh of relief. <laughs> My name is Julie Watson, I'm actually the club secretary and have been for the last eight years. It's immensely satisfying. I think for us, the coaching was something that was missing. When we started applying for the big funding applications, we were asked how many coaches we had, how many qualified coaches we had, and for a long time we couldn't tick that box. It wasn't until Jules came back again that we were able to say, look, you know, you're good at this, you've got a good rapport with the children, why don't you do the training? And he's now developed the whole coaching team around that. But the kids go from being, you know, a shy, not wanting to speak to an adult uh, kid who won't even go up the back of the start hill, to racing, to jumping, to, to being able to have a proper conversation with you as an adult, which a lot of children seem to struggle with. Um, to, you know, to looking after themselves, to bringing their own kit, to making sure they've got their, their lunch, their drink, to knowing where to find their, their race information. It's all, you know, we teach them all of that at all level. Morning guys, right, the coaching session this morning, the main goal is going to be getting you down through this straight a lot smoother, so we're going to want to use the pumping technique as we come through, so I'm going to be looking for your pedals to be in what position, can you remember guys from before? Level pedals, excellent. It builds them a very strong character and uh, makes them very confident, it's all around confidence, you know, those riders that, that do well are confident riders. It's, it's a sport where you've got to be able to feel that you can do well. And the coaching does that. You know, the coaching will teach them what their next goal is. It might not be to win a race, but it might be, you know, to get to the next level at the next race meeting. And if they strive to achieve that, that's all we ask for, really. But we do see a huge difference, quite quickly, in fact, once we put them on the track. We also, the boys, the coaches also work with the local schools, um, quite often during the summer holidays uh, and, the other, and other times during the year we'll bring the schools in. Often the schools like to uh, quite involve the kids that, are, that need a bit of special help maybe, those that are badly behaved. Again, because the sport is quite a cool sport and they quite like to get involved, but it is very disciplined. We have a very strict rule book and we do enforce it. Um, you know, once they get to a point where they're enjoying it, they misbehave, the racing is taken away from them from a temporary period of time and it, and it, it, it stops them. They, they respect it and they respect the rules as well. And then as we come down to the jumps, 
As we come up to the jump, we want to bend our arms, then our legs. As we go over the top of the jump, we want to push away with our arms and then with our legs. Well, we, we've we done so well in the last few years. I mean, we've gone beyond even my wildest dreams, and I have to say that I do aim very high and I do push the club to, to its limits. But we would really like to have a, a different piece of land, a wider piece of land in the town, um, so that we can develop a track that's European standard, so that we can start holding European meetings. We know we're very good at running national meetings. We've done it now. This, is, this will be our third year. But to take it one step further would be good. I'm thinking about going in here and getting a basket from a BMX, actually. Go down the pub. <laughs> Let's go to the pub. Yeah. Sacked it off for the pub. I don't know, I, d I don't really make too big a thing of it. I mean, there's certain people at work that I think get it more than others, and I perhaps share it with them a little bit more, but, you know, I don't come in after a weekend and tell them everything that I've been doing, because they just, you know, it's a bit, it's like another world, really. Um, I think they find it amazing how much I travel. I do talk about that, like, oh, where have you been this weekend? Oh, I've gone just up to Manchester again. And they're like, what? <laughs> again? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they can't understand how I can travel so much, I guess, but I've, I've done it all my life now so pretty much the pros now since it since BMX came into the Olympics um, you've you've gradually developed a distinct gap between a pro and an amateur um, most of the guys in elite will be focusing on BMX full-time will be full-time athletes a lot of them are funded by the National Federation um, and obviously as an amateur I'm working a full-time job and beyond that I mean there might be some guys out there racing elite who do have a, a side job or something, but their main focus in their life is racing, that's, they work their training, that comes first. Like with me, I do a bit of training, but my main focus really is just having fun, enjoying what I'm doing, which is a complete, you know, it's a world of partner. I don't know, I, d I don't really see it as a career anymore because, you know, I do it on my weekends, it's fun, I'm just having a blast doing it, to be honest, and I just take it as it comes, I keep racing and maybe do another Worlds in a couple of years' time when it comes back to Europe. I, I just go with the flow really, just enjoy riding my bike and being with the people that are in the, in the BMX community because it's, it's just fun. <laughs> right, so what are we doing? She's coming in that gate, Yeah. over the driveway, Yeah. up on the roll, Yeah. turn, Yeah. manual over the thing. Go! Do you want to sit up on there for a, take a moment to go, sort of? Yeah. Yeah? There. We're sticking really well to our plan. What plan? The plan is we got one. It's really important. I mean, that's why a lot of people do it because you, you go to a race, you know, you spend a week at work and then you go away for a weekend and you feel like you've been away for a week because you, you turn up and you, there's so many people that you talk to and just have a good laugh with you and you've all got the same thing in common. So it's, you just have a really good time and I think like when I was doing the trails, I did enjoy sort of going to the woods and hanging out with my friends and stuff, and I still do, but it's different going to a race. You see so many people and you only see them now and again, so it's, you just have a good time. There's loads of clubs popping up all around the country now. The best way is to have a look on the British Cycling site, see where your local club is. Um, just get down there with your bike, um, talk to the people down there, see what the club's got going on, just get involved, have a ride. I mean, it's so chilled out coming to BMX. It's not really like going to another sports club. You, I mean, some do have quite organised sessions now, but everyone's so friendly and welcoming, you know. You can just go down there, try it out, have a bit of fun, and see if you like it. Um, I, th I think I'd be quite shy if I wasn't 
Well, I am quite shy anyway, I think, really, but when I was little, I was so quiet. And I, I think I probably still would have been really quiet if I hadn't have got into BMX. It just makes you mix with people, like different people from all different backgrounds and different countries. And I mean, how many kids get to do that? Like, you know, I did a couple of internationals when I was younger, and you sit in like around the back of the start with all these people speaking different languages and stuff, and you end up making friends from other countries. And I just feel really lucky that I've had that and been a part of it. And um, yeah, it's, it's definitely shaped the way I am, without doubt. Um, my name's Julian Allen. Um, got involved in BMX here. Late 83, 84, the club here at Braintree formed in 1984. And as soon as we found out there was a club from, you know, we raced, we ragged bikes about. My dad was a motocross grass track rider. Um, always rode off-road bikes. And as soon as there was a BMX club here, we, we came along and got involved and uh, took it from there, really. Um, as a rider, I raced all through the 80s, had reasonable um, reasonable results, uh, competed national level, um, managed to win a British Championship title in 1988, um, a cruiser title, um, rode in several world championships, European championships and that type of thing. Um, had a few years off through the 90s and then um, back into the noughties, coming to the 2000s, um, came back, found the BMX track just down the road from me, was still here, and um, jumped in, got back involved with it, and uh, that was, God, not sure what year, 2007 I really got involved with the club, and then 2008 I got back into riding full time again, 2009 we rebuilt the track, and uh, here we are today. I was never one for team sports at school, really, um, football, that sort of thing, never really, never interested me. Um, and coming from, like I say, my dad being um, two-wheel sport motivated, everything we ever did was motocross, road racing and all that stuff. And quite frankly, I was never brave enough to race a motocross bike. Um, with BMX, it, 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 it encaptured all that stuff that motocross has. It's got the speed, the jumps, colourful stuff and, and the people, you know, in, in BMX, as a family sport, you get people from, you know, bringing their kids five years old right up to 45 and over. Everybody's doing the same thing. Everybody can compete on the same track. And um, it's just it's just exciting, you know, it's, it's good. Especially here at Braintree, you know, and, and I, I guess across the country, um, every club, it, 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 it's committee, it, it, they're volunteers. And most of those parents, the, you know, the, the, the son, the daughter, whoever has got involved, they found a track, they wanted a BMX bike and they've badgered mum and dad, they bought the bike. And then to go to a race, you know, you, you need your mum and dad there to, to be there to support you, to get you there most, for, for most kids from regional level and so on. Um, and then when it when it comes to the, the the club itself and the committee, like I say, that they're, they're all parents, and it, 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 it it's it's just a proper family sport. You, you get everyone, and, and and within within that family, every family is, it becomes its own family. I would say, you know, there's a whole BMX family. Um, recently picked up an injury, and you know, around around the event, it's, you can just feel people are there to support each other and help you out if you need a need a hand getting about the place or whatever. And, you know, it's just proper family sport. Right down, pedals level up. We did one this morning, bit earlier. Yeah, go into the corner in the middle. Big pedals all the way around the corner. Nice pump over the step up. Whereas I say it's a family sport and everyone's here to help each other, at, at the end of the day it's down to the individual, the work they're going to put in before they get here. Um, and then when they turn up on race day they're here, they're ready and it, it's, it's not a case of being there and you've got some other guys in your team to rely on. When they're up on the gate it can be a very lonely place, you know, you're, you're out there on your own, if you made the final you hear your name called out and you're there on the line, all, the, all eyes are on you and you know, from, from, for children, I think I think it, it's really good from a social aspect. Five, six, seven, eight years old, they can have friends from all over the country. You know, they 
wherever they're from, like wherever we go to a race is, they might not have seen those kids for a week or two, but there's little groups, little social groups, and I think for, for life skills, it's very important, you know, they, 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 get, they learn all those social skills, and I think it's fantastic that they can do that here. We'll just cut right straight to that. Free script, this is. Really thought this through. Yeah, it's all been six, six, seven weeks planning. <laughs> for about a year now. It actually started with um, the other discipline I've been doing, which is MTB Four Cross. Um, that's how I got back into racing after a few years out. I just kind of went there for fun and um, enjoyed it more than I thought. Ended up doing a World Cup race and I nearly won it. Yeah, it's, it's quite a similar event. Um, it's just, it's sort of down a hill. It's a lot rougher. Um, people seem to get their elbows out a bit more. It's a bit like, you know, more argy-bargy. You get away with a bit more. Um, I think a lot of people in BMX think it's more similar than it is. If you go and ride it, it's actually quite, there's a lot more involved. It's quite often about line choice rather than just a simple one way around the track. You try and get around there the fastest. You kind of need to be a bit creative and find the fastest line down the course in four cross. Um, I like the fact that you, get, you go down a big hill and um, it's, just, it's just a bit different. And the scene is quite good. Like they've got quite a good scene where they make a big event out of it. You get loads of spectators. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just good fun. Then they got, I was already on their bike, um, got on the team, and it's been really cool because they're actually quite local to me. Um, got to know the guys really well. Some of the guys that are local I've been riding with and stuff. And um, and then I ended up getting on the BMX team from there because, and that was another part of the reason why I ended up racing BMX again because they were getting involved and it just made sense really. And yeah, it's going really well. It's a great team. And not so much that, but more just when you're hanging out together at the races, you chat to each other and you see how it's going. And a teammate is exactly that. You you give each other praise and support. And, you know, we've got quite a good vibe going in our team tent. And, yeah, it's been a really good atmosphere. And I think everyone's found that. Yeah, I feel like I have done a lot. Um, I mean, I still go through the same stuff sometimes. But I'm a little bit more chilled out now because it doesn't quite mean as much to me as maybe the up-and-coming riders. So, yeah, I try and be there for them if they want to have a chat about it and stuff. And So just, just having people to chat to, like, within your team tent to, to sort of take your mind off anything that's bothering you about racing, you know, that's a good thing in itself. Already next line, jump in, take your seat out. Already next line. Well, when we get, you know, we coach kids from four or five years old, 
and they may be beginners, they may be experienced riders. We try and we try we, we open sessions for all riders of all abilities. Um, first thing, obviously, comes I think is giving them confidence. Um, they may turn up and be nervous. They may not. Some of them may never have been on a BMX bike before. They may never. They may have had a BMX bike and they've never been on a BMX track. Um, so it's giving them the confidence to be able to get on that bike and get on the track. And once they've got once they've got that, it's then a case of improving the skills, um, giving them giving them skills they need. Firstly, to do it safely. Every kid wants to get on the track and go out and do jumps. That's the first thing they want to do. And some of them learn really quickly that that's not as easy as they think. So it's, it's getting them, you know, it's just the simple stuff from, could be just picking the bike up and getting on it right so they don't literally fall off the other side. Um, braking, um, all the stuff that basically gets them controlled. And once you've got them confident in being in control of the bike, you can then progress that. So it might be taking them through sets of jumps, through pumping, um, and then once they got the pumping and then manualing, wheelies, all the stuff we all did as kids that we took for granted that kids don't, a lot of kids don't seem to do these days. They don't seem to be out there on their bikes doing skids in the street. So they come here and, you know, the, we, we just try and build, build their confidence, build their skills. So hopefully we're building fully rounded BMX races to go through and be the next generation. I kind of fell into coaching. Um, and it's something I, I never really planned on doing. And as a racer, it's something that, that, was, that took me away from my training. Um, but seeing a kid turn up at the track who, like I say, you know, may never have been down the start hill, and working with them for a week or two, um, you might have that first week where you get a few tears and, oh, I don't want to do that, and, you know, work with them. So we take them away from that area of the track. And, you know, getting them and seeing that, that child grow, you know, to the point where, you know, they might see him doing some jumps and stuff. and. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's really quite heartening, you know, to you get to get an enormous amount out of it. Um, just to, just to think that with a little bit of advice and a little bit of help, you can nurture that child to become become a BMXer. You know, it's quite special. The comeback is going to be hard. It's going to be a few months. Um, I've just been put in cast and obviously um, had the leg fixed in surgery, so going to have a few weeks to have a good think about it. Um, at the minute, my focus is on the British Championships at the end of the year. Um, I'd like to, I'm using that as a sort of carrot. I'd like to be able to get back on a bike and compete for the region at the British Championships, representing East Anglia. It's quite, it's, it's a big thing in Britain, our British Championships. It's a, it's a grassroots event on a big national scale and it's, it's the end of the season blowout. It's a big party too. So yeah, I think that's what, four months away. I'd like to be able to get back on the bike and uh, be riding at the British Championships, um, refocus and hopefully get back on it. I'd like to qualify for the 2014 World Championships in Holland, so it gives me another 18 months of um, getting my head down and getting on with it. Um, I, I think since it's been in the Olympics, it's just been getting better and better, really. I mean, I say I've been racing since the 80s, and it took to quite a dip in the 90s. I mean, it went really quite, so there wasn't that many people doing it, and I've seen it progress and progress from there, and I can't believe how big it is now, to be honest. It's, and it's just growing and growing. I, I think um, with the Supercross format, with the elites, they've, they've done a brilliant job. Like I'm as, I'm a, as much as a fan as a, as a rider, you know? I love going and watch the Supercross and the pros ride as well. It's just like a really good event now. And I think when everyone sees it in the Olympics in the UK, I think it's just going to get bigger.
it, Dave's awesome as a team manager. He's done so much for us, honestly. Like, he seems to work all hours. He's on the phone to me, like, in the evening sometimes. He's not even working. Um, I can't thank him enough. He's done so much for us. Brilliant. Um, the only, everything I do away from BMXing is probably still related to BMXing. Like, I quite enjoy editing videos, but they're always... BMX videos, so <laughs> I, I listen to a whole load of stuff, but I quite like listening to 80s music. If I had a tattoo, I get well, it'd have to be something BMX related because I think if you get a tattoo, it's got to be something that means something to you, and that's the one thing in my life that means something to me and it's been part of my whole life. But um, yeah, I probably won't get one. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it's been a really good day today. Um, we're just in a promotional video for Braintree National. Like, I'm not that local to Braintree, but I'm in the East Anglian region and um, I've got a lot of friends here like Jules who's very involved in the club, I've known him for a long time and uh, he just wanted me to get involved with the promotional video today and we've just been out riding around the town um, just filming some shots and stuff and uh, yeah we've done some strange things today, <laughs> it's, been, it's been a really good laugh. For this week, you have been watching Silent Revolution, the world's biggest BMX show. 